You are such an asshole! Assholeconsulting.com um, And I am going to say... <laughs> I don't know what's happened. Uh, like, 75% of the emails I get, like, hey, what do you say? I'm like, okay, this is the price. I never hear from them again. It's a paid service! For the eighth billionth time! It's a paid service! Asshole consulting! I know it's not teachers and unicorns! It's not Obama and Bernie! It's fucking people that have their shit together and offer value! That's called capitalists! You want free shit? You get shit! It's gonna be free, and it's gonna be the crap advice, your teachers and guidance counselors, all these fucking hack, liar, wannabe pieces of shit out there! And you'll get it for free, and it'll be abs- it won't be worthless. That implies zero value. It's going to be negative value because it's sending you down the wrong path. But you can drop a whole fucking 30 bucks, get a video, and then you will save yourself about a quarter million dollars worth of pain. I don't know if that's worth it to you or not. I know math is not exactly the- it's, it's millennial kids are like, uh, hey, you could have did- No! No! Fuck. Cappy, I'm currently studying electrical engineering, but considering switching to actuarial science in order to avoid a long winding par- and in order to avoid a long winding paragraph, I'm going to break it up into sections. <clears throat> Here's why I think it's a good idea. I get A's in math, but B's and C's in physics and electrical engineering, computer science specific classes. Two, if I do switch, I could graduate an entire year earlier, which would be cheaper. Three, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the actuarial field is projected to grow by 18% in the next seven to eight years, whereas EE is projected to grow by zero. <clears throat> That's because there's more electrical, a lot more electrical engineers. I think like five or six times, maybe even ten times. Uh, four, according to my research and in-demand skill that actuarial employers are looking for is an ability to program, which I have. Granted, I'm not Google-worthy, but I can hold my own. You might be saying, why not switch to computer science? I would, but it would probably take me much longer to graduate. I haven't run the numbers or met an, with an advisor I like. I have or met with an advisor I have with actuarial science, so I'm not 100% sure. I might look into it depending on your advice, but I'm pretty sure it would put me behind. Also, I thought it wouldn't be that hard to get a programming job with a math degree, but being an actuary doesn't work out. Five, I enjoy math statistics and data analysis more than physics, electrical engineering. Oh, fuck, there's your answer, dude. I'll continue. All right, here's why it might not be a good idea. Because the actuarial field has grown in popularity, the entry-level market has become more competitive. At least that's what I've read. Although the BLS projects an 18% growth in actuarial science due to the relatively small size of the field, this accounts for only 4,400 jobs, 38,000 total jobs by 2024. Whereas electrical engineering could lose jobs but still have 315,800 total jobs by 2024. The largest concentration of actuarial employees are in the Northeast, and I hate the cold weather. I could live in Colorado, probably, but that state has a lot more to offer than an entire Northeast region, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. No, dude. Fuck. Have you ever been to Maine? No, I don't know. It's so beautiful with the trees. Yeah, like, we ain't got fucking trees. There are no other trees in the entire United fucking States. It's all Maine. We got mountains, man. It's 4,000 feet tall. You got, you got that in Minnesota? No, but there's this place called Colorado where they're a little bit bigger. We don't have culture like we do. Yes, you're right. Go find a moose. Uh, I could live in Colorado probably, but that state has a lot more to offer than the entire Northeast region in my opinion. So I would hate to have to accept the job and move up there because there are no other opportunities elsewhere. I live in Texas, by the way, Dallas, Fort Worth. I wouldn't mind staying around here for a while I'm starting out. Let me know if you'd like or need more context information about me. All right, well, here's the deal, dude. If, if you're, you don't sound like the idiot kid who's just mailing it in. Um, you're getting your A's in your math, but you're just not cutting it in the physics and the electrical engineering part. And you said you like data and analysis and statistics more than you do engineering. Well, that right there answers the question for me. Because here's the thing, okay, the drawback of actuarial science that you may have to go up north into Connecticut. <clears throat> I understand that drawback. Um, but down the road, and this is going to be a bit of optimistic thinking on my part, I think actuaries, at least some of them, can be outsourced uh, to work at home locations, lo- remote location, independent places. I know the culture 
especially in insurance companies. We need to have you here because reasons. That's the way we've always done it. And insurance companies aren't exactly known for being cutting edge on, you know, uh, evolutionary, you know, oh, let's get on this you know, topic of giving employees the right to work from home and get rid of all of our office cost expense. But anyway, uh, so and you should be able to find something that isn't, you know, not all actuarial jobs. I know it's like IT. Not all IT jobs are in Silicon Valley. Not all actuarial jobs are up in Connecticut. Um, now, the other thing, and so aside from that, I still think it's a good idea to go with the actuarial science. Now, beyond that, you already know how to program and uh, the statistics and math and not to mention more programming you're going to have to learn. That can easily be repurposed. Like along the way, you're going to pick up all these skills that, you know, all of a sudden, I don't know why you'd learn Python, but let's just say you learn all these languages and all these skills that even before you graduate, if all of a sudden you can't find a job in actuarial science, you can become a programmer or you hit a programming boot camp or you just spend a, a three months at home uh, uh, perfecting your, your ability to code in demand languages. Uh, so what I'm saying is that this degree, actuarial science, a lot of the skills in there that you're going to get in that degree can be repurposed into a career in computer programming. And so this flexibility allows you, you know, I know a lot of electrical engineers that end up becoming programmers, a shocking amount of them, actually. Uh, one electrical engineer I know is a computer network, although he's a little bit older and he was there back in the um, U.S. West Telecom days. Uh, still... <clears throat> It, I think, you know, getting a degree in actuarial science with an undergrad in, say, programming or software engineering, that would allow you that if all of a sudden the uh, actuarial route doesn't go the way you want, or you go to Connecticut and you're like, fuck, I hate this, it's not that hard for you to go ahead and use your programming skills to get yourself another career in programming. But the real big thing is that you just, you don't like engineering and you're not doing that well in it. And there's nothing wrong. I mean, fine, yeah, go with the actuarial science. You know, it, that's the only, there's no perfect world. Uh, and you may have to be in the Northeast for a little bit. Uh, but I think that is going to, that's going to be the, because what, you become an electrical engineer and that's what, well, you either become an electrical engineer or nothing at all. Then you got to go back. Here with the statistics and the pro programming and computer modeling, that can be used in many other different fields. So, you know, you go, you, you don't like Connecticut, you can go down to New York, become a quant. So I think you should pursue that, it, it, you know, with the understanding. You may not be living exactly where you want, but uh, at your age, you don't get to make the choices you want. I mean, you do, but they're not that great. So put in your time now, make your bank as an actuary, and then go buy yourself, you know, make all the money in Connecticut and then buy cheap-ass land in Montrose County, Colorado. And then you can, or Texas, get your rambling ranch or whatever and get, get a hat. Anyway, hope that helped out. You guys got questions, go to assholeconsulting.com. If you need emergency asshole consulting services, you can call me using the Praxy app. Download Praxy, P-R-A-X-E-Y from the Google Store or the iPhone Store. I'm on the Praxy network. You just have to search asshole consulting. You'll find me. It is a paid service. It's just if you need to talk to me, it's like, a, it's like FaceTime. We have a phone conversation. You can see me. Oh, my God, it's the Aaron Glary. It's like, yes. You get to see this pretty face. Hi. We have to help you if you call me at like 10.45 in the morning. Like, eh? hey, boogers coming out of my nose, eye bugs in my eyes. Just look all shitty and disheveled. Uh, then we got my books on Amazon.com. We have the blog, CaptainCapitalism.blogspot.com. And the podcast on SoundCloud.com. We'll see you kids later. Toodles.